Oh, mailbag. God. I'm going to change the locks on this building. Oh, mailbag. You did great. Good Thanks, mailbag. Bud. Here we go. Appreciate you. Um, Cole Benz wants to know, is there value in picking up cards from Stars and Stripes and or Leaf products of collegiate players prior to drafting or signing? Or will the value diminish as soon as they have Bowman cards? Yeah, so Stars and Stripes, those products he's talking about are like years before they're even a prospect. Like Stars and Stripes has like high school kids in it who are not even close to getting drafted. You can. It's just a total crapshoot. Like, it's a crapshoot with established product uh, prospects. Mm -hmm. You're just multiplying the odds of difficulty going back before that. So, yeah. Someone asked, uh, it's actually. It's cheap, though. I will say it's cheap. But if you're super patient with it, mm -hmm. you can do that. Because there are, I'm trying to think, because there are some guys, even like Elite Extra Edition is a product that has crazy, like, young, young guys. It's not the worst idea. It's just, it, yeah, I don't know. Well, even with your experience with breaking Bowman University, it. At this point, or I'm sorry, Bowman Inception University, do you feel like there isn't there's still a demand mainly for a uh, professional uniform? Of course, like that, hundred percent. There, this there did is not a, change that. There is a. It has. Well, it has a little bit though. Again, we could go. I always go back to Happy John. Mm -hmm. He likes his college sports. Now that things have college logos, it's made a difference. So it has definitely increased. The demand for college sports, now that they have logos and rights to the teams, mm -hmm. has made a big difference. But the demand for, for pro is always going to be much higher Do you across the board. feel like we missed out on an opportunity naming him Happy John instead of Happy Harden? Like it the alliteration, it no, flows no. so much better. No, no, Happy John's a good name. Mm -hmm. He wasn't that happy yesterday, I'll tell you that, in the team meeting. <laughs> like dragging us fine. down. God. Miserable, miserable Abe. Harden. That's no, he was always happy. Abe. Hateful, hateful Harden yesterday. <laughs> Abe Abd? His last name is ABT. It's oh, yeah, he's a, he's a buyer. Yeah. Um, he's a, he said, there's a dude in the finals that's fairly local to me, Gabe Vincent. He says, but not being a huge basketball guy, I have no idea what cards to even look at, uh, but buying a card of a local guy in the finals makes the finals all the more interesting for me. Looks like he doesn't have any real rookies in the regular basketball sets like Prism. What do you guys think? I did so he's look a 20, into it. He's a 2020 rookie. Yes, he is a 2020. I, the only, he's got the Flux main one I could see is Flux and Chronicles. And optic, Contenders Optic. He had a number of autos in that. Oh, really? Yeah. Re um, he's in, oh, yeah, Optic Contenders. He's in Recon. But yeah, that. That is one of those things where we find this every once in a while, where there's not, like, you don't have a mosaic, there's no prism. Well, I think he was undrafted. Like oh, is that what it was. is? Okay. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I find that interesting when you're trying to determine a rookie card for a guy like that. Yeah, they were undrafted. Or, excuse me, he was undrafted. Right? Now, this, oh, it's weird. This thing now says in 2018 he was drafted. Oh, really? All the cards for him aren't until 2020. Yeah. I didn't find one any earlier than 2020, at least. Okay. Well, in this curious. case, then, I mean, what do you think? Like, the optic, right? Like, it wouldn't be the flux, I wouldn't think. I mean, take whatever you can get of that guy, honestly. Yeah. So, maybe there's just not... That was another theory I had, is, like, until someone really goes off to where people need to determine a rookie card, maybe there just isn't a rookie for that player. So, it's weird. He was a part... He Oh, he went undrafted in 2018. That He's, makes sense. And then he was signed... In 2020, okay. A, a lot of rookie time. A lot of times, a rookie card is determined not just by their first card, but it's also just by popular opinion, right? Like, I mean, um, Jordan's. You know, everyone knows the Fleer Jordan, but that's not his actual first rookie card. And then Mantle, even though that one Mantle, the what is it, 1952 Mantle, that's not actually his first Mantle card. There was one actually before that. So I think that there is a something that, to be said of popular opinion that goes into choosing the rookie. I'm trying to be nice. Those points are valid, but this guy just has rookies in 2020, so I'm not sure what the play there with rookies and non-rookie cards are. What do you mean? Well, I'm talking about like what is determined as the rookie card. Oh, oh, I got you. Yes, okay. yeah, that's fine. Yo, yeah, oh, right, right. Because other, other, yeah, at other points, the, those years were separate. With Gabe Vincent, what is the? I don't think he has one then. Right. I think it's very wide open because there isn't the prism, the whatever. Yeah, you're, yes. you're right. Okay. Um, that was an astute comment. Thank Jesse. you so much, Michael. Listen, I'm not mad at you, by the way. I get it. I get those. Some of those questions weren't the I'm best. I'm still mad at you, so. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is what I do. I wish people could see the, the shade. They can. Actually, We're recording it. The shade of being color on your face. Oh. Um, I feel the oh. blood pressure being high. I've, my, my blood pressure has been so good lately, but that's okay. Do you have the pills with you? <laughs> 
Don't you worry about my pills. I'm very worried about your pills. John I'm not giving you mouth to mouth. Dudley, you will give me mouth to mouth. I will stomp on your chest. Fair. But I refuse to give you mouth to mouth. <laughs> oh, actually, John Dudley was asking about the Panini break in. We kind of talked about that already. Thank you, John. Um, going on to Matt Tillman. I would say this to John Dudley. Oh, okay. I, I would guarantee we see more content around the Panini break in over the next week than any other subject in sports cards. The most popular, probably, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just ridiculous. Uh, Matt Tillman wants to know, what do you all think about... I'm sorry, what do you do with all the base cards that you win in breaks? He's asking me specifically, um, because obviously I... pile them up on your desk. I mean, I do. I (laughs) Typically, like, I I have them organized now here at the office. I also have some at home that are mostly organized. Anything decent value, I try and keep in one area. Um, If it's just somebody who I don't want to get rid of, that goes in another drawer and if it's just a bunch of base i kind of let my daughter play with it she loves just hanging out or, or pretending like the cards have a ton of value to her she still thinks they do i haven't had the heart to tell her that they're garbage so uh don getters everyone loves downtowns and kabooms but when fanatic sticks over do you think they these staple short print inserts lose traction and some value or do they hold strong in terms of values less slash collectability i think they hold strong because i think people will still look back at this age of collecting and that will be the go-to the same way people right now look back at tops chrome or stadium club yeah or flair baseball inserts and stuff like that like oh this was awesome look at the the finest refractors and all that stuff i think people will look back at it the same way i'm trying to think like what there's got to be some people that have a rookie doesn't isn't one of brady's rookies like a skybox Mm -hmm. in skybox do they even make cards anymore no Skybox was its own company for a while. I don't know what happened to them. If they got folded up into somebody else. So I'm just they were owned by Don Russ. That's like a pretty well known rookie card and it's still popular. I'm just trying to think of like other card companies that produced an iconic card that are no longer around. Oh, I see what you're saying. So like look at Flair basketball. Okay, yeah. Like, there's some really awesome basketball stuff out of Flair. Flair okay. Showcase. There's a bunch of nice stuff. To hasn't be clear, you think Flair, not F-L-A-I-R. Flair. F-L-A-I-R. It hasn't been around in years, and yet it still holds a ton of traction. The inserts, the refractors, all that, for sure. And it's not like Panini's going under. They're still going to make cards after this, so they'll still be making Kabooms. They'll still be making downtowns, just not of those specific players, at least not in uniform. So, uh, Michael Ferrario. If you're trying to build a set, he mentions Heritage Series 1 or 2, Stadium Club, does it make sense to buy wax, or are you better off just waiting for a few weeks after the release and buying off eBay? You're always better off. Buy- if you're doing just sets, always just buy the card. Buy the card. Okay. Yeah, always. You're going to pay Well, wait. I mean, isn't Heritage the one that comes in, like, the big, like, there's a ton of cards? Um, it still comes in hobby boxes. It's like a 650-card set. Yeah. Yep. So wouldn't that be the set though? Like, are is that not the? No, Heritage box is still like packs. Oh, it is. And what's the one is that I'm what you're about? Like, what's I'm the sorry. one that's long? Like the, I see it at uh, Walmart all the time. I don't know. It's like oh, a, like a like a team set or like a uh, a set of stuff. You can buy factory sealed sets. Maybe that's just what I'm thinking of. That's I thought what, yeah. there was like a specific product. You're talking like a single row box. Yeah, yeah pretty those much. Those are like factory sets. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see, John Loriati. Would you agree in general speak in generally speaking, a Beckett Pristine 10 black label holds more weight than a PSA 10? I'm not a fanboy of Beckett, not but I close. feel that the Beckett should maintain a higher value than a PSA 10. Well, black yeah, but, label. Well, yeah, but you're not compa- you're so John, you're correct, but you're not comparing apples to apples. A PSA 10 is a gem mint, a Beckett 95 is a gem mint. A Beckett 10 is a pristine with a gold label. The Beckett black label is the highest selling graded card of anything period a black label outsells any other but it's not an equal comparison for every 500 psa 10s you could get Mm -hmm. you might get one beckett black label yeah so that's so so does it outsell it yes but it should you know if this is a hundred dollar bill is it worth more than a twenty dollar bill of course it's like the same with the sgc gold label essentially like because those are all going to be valued more than a psa 10 as well but yes correct i would be curious to see because i mean it's so rare i'd don't even know if you have very many cards that have both a black label and a gold label. Even if they did, the black label would outsell. Black label is the single highest selling card grade of any. Do you because think that it's the continues best. though? Yeah, that's the one. It's such a good looking card. It's stupid. No, 